subscribing and leaving comments. On Evening Magazine. Bigfoot or Big Phony? So you're telling me that when I see this film of Bigfoot, that's not Bigfoot at all? No, that was me inside that suit. A Yakima man claims he played Bigfoot in the legendary footage, but did he? It cannot be a human. No way on earth it can be a human. John Stoffer no investigates okay. brand new revelations made in this book and see what happens when Evening Magazine recreates the legendary film. In high definition, it's Evening Magazine for Tuesday, March 15th. Now, here's your guest host, Pat Cashman. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Evening Magazine. I'm Pat Cashman. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't done this in a while. I get a little rusty. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that Bigfoot exists? Now, we know that Big Feet exist. That's 12. Double E. But the creature Bigfoot, if you believe he exists, it may be because of the footage, very famous footage shot almost 40 years ago by two Yakima men. But now there is another Yakima man who says, no, 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 that was a hoax. Here's John Stofflet with the story. Northern California, 1967. Two men from Yakima, Washington, capture images of Bigfoot on film. Or did they? This is time people knew the truth about this. So you're telling me that when I see this film of Bigfoot, that's not Bigfoot at all? No, that was me inside that suit. Yakima's Bob Hieronymus says the film many Bigfoot believers consider proof the creature exists is big time phony. But it fooled millions of people for a long time. I could have spilled my guts, you know, 30 years ago or, or more if I really wanted, if I really thought, you know, that uh, I was gonna make a fortune off it. But uh, I kept it quiet because I promised I would. And I think after 35 years, of my, uh, the, the, the truth should come out. Hieronymus says Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin, the two men who captured the so-called Patterson-Gimlin footage of that alleged Bigfoot, asked him in 1967 to wear a type of gorilla suit for their film. They said they'd pay him $1,000 when the job was done. I was a young fellow then, you know. I said, well, 1000 bucks that's quite a bit of money. Sure, I'll do it. So you're thinking I wear this suit for 10 minutes and I get my thousand bucks and... That's the end of it, yeah. I keep my mouth shut. Hieronymus says he tries on the gorilla suit and Patterson you. teaches him an ape walk. Showed me how he wanted me to walk, you know, how an ape or a gorilla would walk, sort of. He said, uh, that's perfect, that's all we need. According to Bob Hieronymus, he drives to Northern California, meets up with Patterson and Gimlin, and travels to the film site. I got into the Bigfoot suit, nervous, you know, as heck, but worried about getting shot. <laughs> By a hunter or something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they were ready, and uh, they said, okay, Bob, start walking. And uh, I walked out across, you know, the place there where they had picked out. I looked back at him, went off into the brush. He filmed it, you know, the horse was, uh, he was jumping, jerking the camera up and down. I said, that's perfect, that was perfect. Didn't have to do nothing else. I jumped down in a big hole there. I jumped down in there, you know, and said, get this son of a... Patterson allegedly asks Hieronymus to take that gorilla suit with him. According to Hieronymus, Patterson and Gimlin then say they're staying to make fake Bigfoot tracks around the film site. Roger and Bob come home, drop my horse off, got the suit out of the car, and that's, that's the last I saw. 
Roger Patterson's Bigfoot film is instantly in the media spotlight. He charges audiences to see the movie, charges companies fees to use it for commercial purposes. Hieronymus, the man allegedly in the suit, says he never got paid for the job. How much did he pay you afterwards? Not a one dime. Nothing. And they said, as we make money off this thing, we'll give you more money. Well, nothing ever materialized, not a dime of it, you know, anything. I, I felt like I was a uh, took, you know, one of the, I just cast away, you know, like I wasn't any, any, any part of it. See Roger Patterson, the first man yet to film Bigfoot. When he heard Bob Hieronymus' story, it didn't surprise author Greg Long of Mill Creek. Long and wife Pat spent several years researching Roger Patterson before writing a new book, The Making of Bigfoot. And you start looking in to Roger Patterson, what do you find out? I don't, I, I don't know how else to put it, but um, he would cheat people, and he would lie, and he would steal. And this is not a few people who told me this. This is dozens of people in Yakima who've told me the same story, that Patterson simply was not an honest man. A con artist, to put it bluntly. He persuaded them to invest in his schemes. He never paid them back. They got no money out of it. The only, guy, the only person who got money out of this film was Roger Patterson. Long uncovers arrest warrants issued for Patterson alleging he didn't return the very rental camera he used to shoot his Bigfoot film. When you have a man like Roger Patterson who you really couldn't trust, who did lie, who did steal, who did manipulate people, it casts a big shadow of doubt on that film. In addition to Bob Hieronymus's confession, reportedly backed up by a lie detector test, Greg Long also comes across this guy, Philip Morris, a North Carolina costume maker. Morris tells Long he sold a gorilla suit like this one to Roger Patterson a couple of months before Patterson allegedly modified the suit and shot his film. Morris saw the Bigfoot on a news program and he said, that's my suit. Bob Hieronymus's mother Opal and others reportedly saw the suit in Hieronymus's car when he returned to Yakima in the fall of 67. Greg Long doesn't paint a very pretty picture of Roger Patterson. How would you describe him? Roger was a crook, there's no doubt about it. Roger was a con man, a crook. Patterson died in 1972 at age 38. Would we be able to come by and just ask you a few questions? We tried to give his widow, Pat Patterson, do do who interviews? reportedly still makes money selling her late husband's footage, a chance to answer the accusations. No comment, okay? You want, you want to leave it at that? And what about Bob Gimlin, the other Yakima man Hieronymus alleges was in on the hoax? And I sure want to give him a chance to give his side of the story. Gimlin's wife, Judy, says he doesn't talk to the media. However, we received a late fax from Gimlin stating, quote, I was the only person with Roger Patterson when he filmed the creature. I have always believed what I saw was real and not a man in a suit. My belief has been supported by countless hours of research and scientific studies, end quote. He goes on to say he has never profited from the film and says, quote, Greg Long's book is a crudely written fantasy account of Bob Hieronymus's attempt to make a few dollars and enjoy his 15 minutes of fame. Hieronymus claims Gimlin told him something quite different when Hieronymus said he was going public about the alleged hoax. He said, well... I've lied about this thing for so many years, I have to keep lying to save face. And he says, I probably will sue you. Uh, you. You can only carry a thing like that so long. It weighs you down, you know. Well, you know that's me, you know. I know it's me. Everybody around here knows it's me. God knows it was me. <laughs> and, you know, it's just time to let people know that it was a hoax. Or was it a hoax? It cannot be a human. No way on earth it can be a human. Why does this man say it is Gimlin who is telling the truth and Bob Hieronymus that's lying? Why won't Hieronymus do the ape walk he says proves he's Bigfoot for our video camera? And if we rented a gorilla suit and made our own Bigfoot film in a Seattle park, would it look real or fake? Well, when we come back, the other side fires... Is this Bigfoot or Big Bob Hieronymus in a modified gorilla suit? It's absolute proof in the film it cannot be a human. No way on earth it can be a human. Researcher and retired journalist John Green knew Roger Patterson, has studied his film and Bigfoot for decades, and says that is no man in a monkey suit. That he can't be the man in the suit because he's 
in the first place, not big enough, not tall enough, and in the second place, his arms are too short and his legs are too long. It's impossible, it's physically impossible. Green sent us a long list of what he believes to be inaccuracies in Long's book and holes in Hieronymus's story. I know Hieronymus is lying because Hieronymus hasn't got a clue in the world about where that movie was made. Big ego. Sorry. Green is angry. Author Greg Long focuses on filmmaker Roger Patterson and focuses very little on Patterson's film. And he had this strange idea of his own that you could prove the film to be a, a fake by uh, attacking the character of the person who held the camera. That he didn't pay some of his bills is not untrue. That he failed to return the camera when he should have is not untrue. But that he was a thief and a con man, I mean, that's ridiculous. In that faxed statement from Bob Gimlin, the man Hieronymus says was in on the hoax, Gimlin says the book is, quote, an ugly character assassination of a man no longer alive to answer the accusations. So uh, blinded by his own fixations that when he encountered a uh, guy who'd been telling it in the tavern for 30 years that he was the guy in the suit, he just fell for the whole thing, hook, line, and sinker. The Patterson film is really, for Bigfoot believers, a religious icon. That's the way that I would look at it. They worship this film. It is the single best piece of evidence they claim for Bigfoot. They're up in arms because I've basically said the emperor has no clothes, and this has made them very angry. Green says when he hired an expert to run a computer analysis of the Patterson film, the results showed the creature could not have a human skeleton that it's much wider and deeper and would have to belong to an unknown primate. The only other explanation, according to the study, that it was a sophisticated special effects machine that could not have been made in 1967. Well, the scientists, you know, for all they know, say that uh, no, no human being could walk like that. No human being could walk like that. That's BS. <laughs> Everybody in the country around here says, well, we know it's you. We tell the way you walk. But Hieronymus won't demonstrate the Bigfoot walk he says he did in the film because talks are underway to make his story and Greg Long's book into a TV special, one in which Hieronymus's walk would be scientifically compared to the ape walk in the film. And yes, he wants money to do it. What do you say to the people that say, okay, Bob Hieronymus is coming forward now because he wants to make money off of this? It's not necessarily making the money off it, it's that uh, people need to know the truth about it. And do you think you're entitled to be paid something? It's my turn, let's put it that way. Since I was never, you know, even recognized at all by anybody, maybe, you know, someday I'll, I'll get my thousand dollars back, who knows? We wondered what it would look like if we tried to make a Bigfoot film of our own, the way Long and Hieronymus say Roger Patterson made his. We picked up a gorilla suit at Champion Party Supply and made no modifications to it. We used a 16 millimeter film camera, roughly like the one Patterson used. You be the judge. Does it show how easily Roger Patterson's film could have been faked? Or does it help prove Patterson's film is much more than a man in a gorilla suit? Every effort by Hollywood to make a Sasquatch of their own falls short of this film very far short for the simple reason that the people in the suits don't have the right arms and legs. What do you say to the people that say that Bob Hieronymus is lying about this? He couldn't possibly have been in that suit. They don't want to know the truth. And to the people who just don't want to believe it, who just say, no, that's Bigfoot, what do you say? Like I say, Roger fooled him. Well, you haven't heard the last of this story, that's for sure. And another question, does Bigfoot believe that we exist? Perhaps that's a story for another program. If you're enjoying all this rare and unique content, please show your support by subscribing and leaving comments.